So class, we made it to our new unit. Our new unit is on point of view. So you might remember point of view from earlier grades like third, second, with point of view being first person, third person. First person being I am going to the store today, while third person being someone else is doing it, like he is going to the store. So we're going to look for this unit on how writers use point of view to convey different parts of a story and see which one you think is most effective for certain situations. So we have this text that we're going to look at today. It's called Here Boy, and it's an excerpt from Winn-Dixie, because of Winn-Dixie, which some of you may have read. Now, looking at it, I want you to look at the title, Here Boy, and look at the picture. We have this little doggy here, this guy. And I want you to think, who is probably the main character in this story, and why do you think that? Now, as I skim and scan, I see right away, I see this word, I, right here. So this tells me that the story is probably first person. And so I know who's ever telling the story is going to be through their eyes. It's going to be looking through the world through their eyes and seeing other people. So throughout this week's reading, I want you to annotate words that you're unfamiliar with and those difficult vocabulary words. And so we're going to use context clues to figure out what those unfamiliar words mean. So let's begin by reading and see if your guess about who the main character is is actually correct. In Because of Winn-Dixie, Opal Bulani has just relocated with their father, who is a preacher, to a small town in Florida. In the following passage from chapter one, Opal goes to the supermarket to buy macaroni and cheese, but she returns home with much more. From that day on, her life begins to change in important ways as she learns about the value of friendship and community, compassion and forgiveness. So here's the background. We have this new person who's moved to Florida. Her dad's a preacher, dad's a pastor and something's happened where she returns with much more. So let's see if we can figure out what that is. At first, I didn't see a dog. There is just a lot of vegetables rolling around the floor, tomatoes and onions and green peppers. So what do we notice? The first sentence of the first paragraph includes the word I. And so I think that's opal because right here at the top, it told me opals in our story. So the key events must be happening to her or around her. The first sentence also mentions a dog. Since it comes up right away in the story, I think the dog is going to be important. I'll write a number one there, because I think that's our important part of our story. Ta-da, there's my number one. The second sentence says that there are vegetables rolling around the floor. This is unusual. Normally we have vegetables in those bins. So this might be an important event. I'm going to label it two because I think it's some kind of disturbance. So all this stuff rolling around on the floor. Sentence three. And there was what seemed like a whole army of Winn-Dixie employees running around waving their arms just the same way the store manager was waving his. Huh, so Winn-Dixie employees, that must tell me that that's the name of the store. The store must be called Winn-Dixie, like a grocery store. Like we have Walmarts here. So that sentence, I think it's telling me that people running around, they must be scared or upset about something. Though I'm not quite sure what it is yet. So I'm going to place a number three by the phrase, employees running around waving their arms. So just in that first paragraph, I have these three kind of important events that are going on. Now, what does this tell me? Well, it tells me that I can now put it together from a summary. I can use those key events to write a short summary of what's gone on so far. So this is what I have. A girl named Opal goes to the supermarket and discovers a mess being made and employees running around upset. So let me change that to our black font. There we go. And I'll paste my sentence that I have. Now let's keep reading and see what we have. Paragraph two, and then the dog came running around the corner. He was a big dog and ugly. And he looked like he was having a really good time. His tongue was hanging out and he was wagging his tail. He skidded to a stop and smiled right at me. So I think that's an important event. So I'm gonna put that as number four. There's a dog's running around and then he stops and smiles at her. I had never before in my life seen a dog smile, but that is what he did. He pulled back his lips and showed me his teeth. Then he wagged his tail so hard he knocked some oranges off a display. And they went rolling everywhere, mixing with the tomatoes and onions and peppers. Huh, so he's keep making that disturbance. So I'm going to label that number five. 
The manager screams, somebody grab that dog. Huh, so the manager, we now found out what they're upset about. They're upset that this dog's running around their store. The dog went running over to the manager, wagging his tail and smiling. He stood up on his hind legs. You could tell that all he wanted to do was get face to face with the manager and thank him for the good time he was having in the produce department. But somehow he ended up knocking the manager over. And the manager must have been having a bad day because lying there on the floor in front of everyone, he started to cry. The dog leaned over him, really concerned, and licked his face. So, hmm, we have this manager and he gets knocked over. So that's another important event. And then this is kind of, I think, an important part. The manager is crying. This adult man, he's crying. So that's how bad of a day he has. Please, said the manager, somebody call the pound. Wait a minute, I hollered. That's my dog. Don't call the pound. Ah, so this is another event I think is important. Opal is claiming Winn-Dixie. Oops, I have a dog doesn't have a name yet. Opal is claiming the dog. All the Winn-Dixie employees turned around and looked at me, and I knew I had done something big. And maybe stupid, too. But I couldn't help it. I couldn't let that dog go to the pound. Here, boy, I said. Now, as we were reading it, these were some of the key events that I found that I put those numbers by. Opal sees a dog running around the grocery store, and then when the dog smiles at Opal, she realizes he's friendly. The dog is having a great time, but he's causing a big mess in the store by knocking down fruits and vegetables so far. So I want you to think about this part right here. Before we write our summary on the side, what does the dog's mood seem to be? And how do you know? Well, I think he's pretty happy because it's talking about how he's seen the dog smile and then it's telling me that he is concerned, he licks the person's face, so he doesn't want to get in trouble. How does the manager react to getting knocked down? Well, he reacts by crying. He just breaks down. Now, I want you to tell me this. Is this a key detail or event that helps you visualize the story? Is mixing in with the tomatoes and onions and the peppers? So that sentence right here, do you think that's a key part? A key event? I do, because it's showing the dog is continuing to cause a commotion. It's not just like he's done, but he's still going and is still stressing that manager out. Now, I'm going to write a summary for paragraphs two through eight. So this is a summary that I have. Opal sees a dog running wild, knocking things over. When the manager asks someone to call the pound, Opal decides to save the dog by claiming the dog is hers. So let me change our font size. There we go. And we need it to be black and 16. So I'm going to put that sentence that we just said down here. Oops. And it made it a little big. And it still didn't change the font. So let me change it back for us. So we've just now looked at because of Winn-Dixie. And I want you to notice as we read it, it used that word I to show our character Opal, what she's thinking, what she's feeling, what she's saying. And so it's showing us that she's really vested in this dog. She really wants to make sure this dog is okay.